All right, I wanted to do a real quick video on this card specifically because uh, this card, Kevin Kiermaier, while all these other center fielders like Mike Trout and Mickey Mantle are coming into the game now, I don't want people to forget about Kevin Kiermaier. Before this moment, I wasn't really familiar with Ke Kevin Kiermaier. I knew he was a great fielder. Obviously, you see there he has the Platinum Glove uh, card, so he's, he's a great fielder. He's one of the best fielders in the game. And he's obviously playing a position that's very important in the game center field. So while I'm going over this Kevin Kiermaier video, I also want to go over this recent game I had just to just to get more games on this channel but uh this guy had a pretty decent record similar to mine world series player so this was a great win for me and just wanted to go over the game so first inning he Rollins had a great at bat hit a home run on a change up um low and in change ups this year they actually kind of fixed with the exit velocities even when you squared up like I did there it's not going to be blasted uh, you know for 110 miles an hour you simply can't hit a change up that hard unless it's up in the zone. I've noticed a lot of the, the change-ups down in the zone don't leave off the bat the same way they used to. And that is true to actual physics of baseball. Change-ups change come in at slower. That was an 87 change-up, I think. And it's going to leave the bat slower. So the faster it comes in, the faster it goes out. All right, right here, got one of those sinkers. You know, when you see it come off the bat like that at the middle, you, you're pretty sure it's going to be a hit. Um, I, there's so many of those times where I, I my opponent gets a hit like that and I get pissed off. But, uh, yeah, I always validate it for myself. Like, no, that should have been it. Uh, I did see somewhere on Showzone that this Nick Martinez card was, like, way better than he's rated. Like, his meta was super good. He's not that good. I'm not just basing that off of my experience against him in this game. Uh, I used him. It wasn't good. <laughs> his velocity is just too low. The pitch mix doesn't have enough, uh, you know, differential in his pitch velocities and i feel like the break doesn't break as much either on on any of the pitches so nick martinez is out for me in the rotation and it's hard to get pitchers right now so that pedro martinez is going to be huge when we eventually do get him uh anyway we're five batters in 16 pitches posada kind of got away with one here we did square it up but being early on it you know it's not perfect by any means but probably better to be early on that one away he got me to do what he wanted to do was to swing early on the changeup. Still got it anyway, you know? So make sure you square those ones up if you're gonna be you're gonna be early on it. All right, now Kevin Kiermeyer. At this point, I only had a couple of bats with him and uh, mainly for his defense. That, I don't know how we got to that. Uh, you know what, I was late on the fastball away, so we threw it down and in. I'll be honest, I completely guessed. I, I bet he's gonna go hard in because he saw me late on the fastball away. So that's, what we, that's the way you gotta think sometimes. Not sure if I showed it, so first pitch, fastball up and away it's only 95 if i'm very late on that I, you know i wouldn't blame him for thinking i'd be late on something inside but that's kind of that's kind of how you beat your opponent mentally is thinking the way they might think or thinking the way you would think if you were pitching to yourself you know what i mean if i was late on that i would i would definitely throw inside see if i can get him again so first swing he he does have three home runs this game i'll let you know that and yes, I did a wild card Roy Halladay just for fun. Um, but it's been a while since I had a five run first inning against a comparable opponent. So I just wanted to show that. That's a nice play by J-Roll there. I tried Dante Bichette out in left field for a little bit because he's got max contact. Um, not good fielding. That was the only good play he made, but he's very slow to jump to the ball. And uh, he's got a good swing. Him and Vinny Castilla are very underrated. While we're on the topic of underrated cards, Vinny Castilla from the Rockies... He had a great card last year. I think it was a finest retro. And this year, it's that milestone card. Very good swings from the right side. It's hard to find good right-handed swings. Both of them have it, I think. Um, <laughs> it's so hard to not wild card Posada right now. It's, he's been just killing it for me. I actually didn't start out well with him at all, and I substituted him for Gary Sanchez. Brought him back, and he's been doing great ever since. So he's been my catcher all year. Kevin Kiermaier, second at bat. And... So we got one guy on with two outs. He's definitely pitching carefully to him. That was a great pitch there, but for a ball. And then this is also a pretty good pitch, too, but we just get to it. And uh, it barely stays fair. Yeah, I just wasn't aware of <laughs> I wasn't aware of his ability, man. Kevin Kiermaier's swing. Very smooth. I forget what his vision is, too. 107. That's good. That's really good. Chili Davis is a guy. I always try to be good with him, and I just can't. Like, he doesn't have enough of a pre-swing indication. Like, that leg kick is very small, so I feel like he's hard to tempo with or just to time anything with. His swing is okay, and he always has pretty decent attributes for a switch hitter, but this is the best Chili Davis we have, I think, we've ever had, and um, 
in, in terms of you know the speed being 71 too but it's still it's not that great so i tried him out for a little bit but he's not for me but we get him with a double here that's really only it's one of the biggest hits i can remember from him um strikeout with shohei jimmy rollins first pitch here goes deep up and in just staying ready for it. jimmy rollins is uh unlike chili davis um similar in many ways with the stance and the, the size of the strike zone just a much better tempo swing and um shohei's another guy i'm still trying to figure out all right so after a really long at bat with posada uh kiermaier's up again he's two for two with two home runs at this point uh two outs right now and get where this one was i think it was inside again sent it to right field that's a ball yeah but you can see he's pitching carefully to him all right, I'm just, I'm just coming to go for that one. Laid a really nice curveball in first pitch that I probably shouldn't have swung at. That one was really close. Yeah. So he goes up top again, up and in. And we got on it. We've gotten on him up and in a couple times this game. And up and away and down and in. So he, he tried moving it around, changing the eye level and hitting the corners. And uh, it worked enough for me to just foul a couple off or still get some base hits. But... Uh, there's Biggio. Biggio is surprisingly doing well for me. I've never done with Craig Biggio until this card, the Hall of Fame one. I've always hit like well under 300 with him, and now I'm hitting close to 400 with only like maybe 30 to 40 at bats with him. I use him sparingly, but this this is a good Craig Biggio for sure. Nope, the Hall of Fame series is, is probably the best series next to Finest and Retro Finest, so it's not surprising. It might be the best card series in the game. All right, and there's Chili popping out. All right, Shohei is going to get a really late hit here. Just a doinker. At, just, pitcher did everything right there. He got me to swing late on it. And I end up with a double out of it. Very, very lucky. And fluky for me. So at this point, Jimmy has two home runs as well. And I think we cheese him a little bit here on the base paths. That pitch, I mean, that was off for sure. My swing. And I was late. Um, What happens here? Just some BS. I wasn't even trying to do this. I genuinely thought... I was going to make it with Shohei, and then I realized how stupid that move was. So I just tried to get out of it. I didn't really try to do any of this on purpose. I wasn't like trying to frustrate my opponent. I'm already up by eight runs, but it worked out anyway. And it probably did frustrate him. And then Jackie goes deep here. It late. It was late. Bad swing. Hon honestly, two bad swings lead to two runs. I'd be pretty frustrated. And then uh, he quit after this, But I and I don't blame him. So Kiermaier, I think he went deep twice in this game too, but I only have the one clip right here, which we started the video out. Again, just don't sleep on this card. There's so many underrated cards. If you feel comfortable with cards like this, don't feel forced to use like Stan Musial if you're not good with Stan, Mickey Mantle if you're not good with Mickey Mantle, uh, you know, Shohei if you're not good with Shohei. And I just want to go through this game too, because this was a great game. Um, he... so. Robbie Ray is another card. He's only gotten one good card in my remembrance. It was like a monthly award card two or three years ago. Every card he's gotten since then has not been good at all. But I just wanted to try him out just to make sure I wasn't sleeping on him, see if he was good. Because we don't have a lot of pitching right now. I don't have a lot of starting pitchers I can rely on. Maybe then like two or three pitchers in season three. But even core Babe Ruth is one of my best pitchers right now. So we got to try out as many pitchers as we can. Um... But Robbie Ray is not very good. My opponent got up to a hot start with some good hits. And he eventually went up 3-0. Um, so my opponent went up 3-0 with some good hits. I was surprised Jackie couldn't cut that one off on the dive. Um, but then, you know, two runners on with only one out now. And a runner already crossed. So he got three in the first. Could tell Marte had a single, which moved the runners. So he had first and third now with one out. Sack fly for Chipper here. And that was the end of his scoring in this inning. Got out of it after this. But Robbie Ray, uh, you don't have to worry about sleeping on him. You can you can sleep on him. All right, so I led this game off with uh, Charlie Blackman. I think he's out of my lineup now. I know it's a good card, but I just couldn't fit him on the team. Get one back here with a mistake down the middle. Fastball right down the middle. Just stayed ready for it. Simple as that. All right, Jackie. Always reliable for me. He's hitting like... I think he's hitting over 450 for me right now in probably over 50, 60 at bats, which is great for me. Um, gets a base hit there. We still second with him eventually. Strike. All right, so was able to shut him down with Robbie Ray in the second inning, which was great because I was worried it was going to be a blowout or it was going to be a shootout with a lot of runs. Get one back with Jorge, a little bit off it, a little bit under it. He's been just rock solid for me. Uh, 36 home runs up to this point, but I haven't, again, I used him sparingly. 
until now. I've been using them every lineup I use them in. So we both blanked each other in the third. Get an inside out hit with Kiermaier here, just late. But we're on it. Sometimes you get lucky like that. And I think he has 99 steel with that 97 speed. But, uh, let's see. Yeah, we hit him to a double play, which I was really trying to avoid, but it happened anyway. All right, well, after two blank innings from Robbie Ray, which was better than I thought, he gives up one to Hank Aaron here. Barely snuck over the wall. I wonder what the PCI looked like, but you know what? Whatever. We've gotten a couple like those. 91 off the bat. It sucks. Uh, it is what it is. So he gets one back there. And Posada has been hitting all types of hits for me. Home runs, singles, these hits, which was terrible swing, but it worked. And I think we got a double out of it. Doubles, um, you know, 50 speed's not great, but he's just so reliable. In clutch situations, just to get on base, he draws a lot of walks. All right, so we get out with McCutcheon. I think it was a line drive, and then I struck out with Blackman, unfortunately. And then he leaves another mistake right down the middle to J-Roll. All right, he ties it up. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he just missed it. I, I will say, it's kind of hard to pitch with Rizzo sometimes. That pinpoint just goes all over the place I don't know, when he's in the stretch. I definitely kept um, Robbie Ray in a little too long, six innings. I think his energy was still in the green, so I just wanted to push it to the yellow, but we make a mistake here uh, and give one right back to Del Marte. 3-2 count with no one on. I didn't want to walk him, so I just figured I'd try to jam him with this knuckle curve, but he got on it pretty quickly. Um, yeah, should have thought that he'd be ready for something hard inside and then adjust it, but I wasn't thinking straight, so... Just kind of rushed that pitch. All right, eighth inning, I got a guy on, but couldn't get him home. So he's still up by one going into the top of the ninth. I bring in uh, Rivera. Completely missed this pitch. Like, wanted it away, ended up down. He squared it up perfectly. Which makes me think, even if I got it to where I wanted to, he probably would have hit a gapper or even hit it to left field for a home run. But now we give him a two-run lead going into still no outs in the top of the ninth. So what I would have to get out of this and then battle back. All right, the power of the bunt. Don't hate on me for doing it. Look, it, it, just you got to pull the second baseman in and the third baseman in for a guy who has good bunt. Jackie, Craig Biggio, J-Roll, any of those guys. It just It's so worth it to take the time to adjust your defense for the lineup for those bunts because this came back to haunt him. We got Biggio on as the leadoff hitter with that bunt. And all I have to do here is try to avoid the double play, get him to second. I think we steal. Yeah swung anyway because i thought I, he got a bad jump but we get in there that's huge so we can avoid the double play and just kind of you know take our bat normally all right and then i'm pretty sure i struck out looking with uh hank aaron not a good look but then the very first pitch to posada the cutter on the corner we were kind of off but we got it with good timing so we get a little single and now again with one out i gotta avoid the double play and a guy coming up to the plate who i have not been hitting well with at all like sub 200 er or uh batting average all right, he jams him with a cutter to make it one and two. He threw that double play ball, cutter down and in uh, to get me to hit into a double play, which I do all the time with lefties. And he throws it again here. He saw the second pitch there. So this last one here. Oh, we took the change up. That was a nice take. Uh, perfect release on his pitch, but it was right here, I think. He might have rushed it. So we walk it off with Otani. Wasn't expecting that. He <laughs> got under it, but that's honestly how much you have to get under it because that's a ground ball pitch right there if I've... If I've ever seen it and remembered it from all the times I swung at that cutter down and in. Um, and we got to walk off the show. Hey, so yeah, just wanted to go over those two games to get some games on here. Um, I didn't record myself playing them. I just wanted to relax and play them, but they were good games. So, and want to go over Kevin Kiermaier. So yeah, hope you enjoyed.